I've been asked for ages to do this video, so here it is. ATM 4K versus the Pard NV008 shoot down video coming right up. Don't forget to visit www.ergonology.com. On there you'll find all of our social media links and forums and 3D printed sections. Facebook group is there for you to discuss anything you want to do with air rifles, air pistols and technology. Our dedicated forum where you can buy and sell anything that you want with regards to air rifles and air pistols. As well as our 3D printed section where you'll find the cradles that you can purchase for the chronographs for FX and the ATM ballistic rangefinders. Hi there YouTubers, it's Steve here and on this channel we do a whole load of air rifles, air pistols and technology videos. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And also don't forget to check out the video description in YouTube down below. You'll find a whole load of our useful forum groups in there, as well as our Facebook group, as well as our wonderful new merchandising, which you most definitely should get hold of, and 3D printing, and a whole load of extra stuff. But anyway, let's crack on. I get asked this question at least three times a week. What should I get? ATNs, or should I get a pod? I want a digital night scope. Which one's the best one, Steve? What do you recommend? Well, for you guys that are interested, um, basically I've done a whole video series on the ATNs. It was on the HD series, not the 4K Pro, but they are pretty much the same thing. Slightly better resolution in the 4K. Check it up here, there's a whole series up there. But anyway, I thought the easiest way to do this was to break this down into subcategories, give them a score each, and then we can work out at the end how and which is best. So quite simply, let's start off with the elephant in the room. Size and weight. Okay, so I think it's obvious which way this is going to go, but basically, if you've got the 4K Pro here, um, its uh, length, let's just go to the length to start off with, is 18 inches long. That's how long it is. Yeah, you had the sunshade on it, you're up to now 20 and a half inches long. The MV08, 7 inches. So definitely, definitely, you can see the big difference here. Then you go on to the weight, and this is where it gets interesting. The 4K Pro here, its weight is 1,200 grams. Don't forget also you've got to add a torch onto here if you want night sight, and then if you want the rangefinder version, it goes up to 15, over 1,500 grams. That's 1.5 kilograms. Add a torch, you're probably looking at 1.7 kilograms for a fully equipped out ATN 4K Pro. If you come onto the pod, well, the pod in the non-rangefinder version, which is without this little box on here, MV008, is 600 grams. Add on the rangefinder, it's 700 grams. It's got a built-in IR torch. Over half the weight and over half the length. In fact, it's more than that. So definitely tick in the box there. Pod gets that one straight away. Then we're looking at the pricing, which is the next major one that everyone's really interested in. Well, you're, these prices are of about uh, November 8, uh, 19. Of course, the prices may change and you can get better deals, but generally you're looking at a grand for a 4K Pro. If you want the ABL rangefinder version to add on to there, add another 300 quid on there, 1300 quid. If you want the pod and you want the standard pod without the rangefinder, you're looking at £600. You want the one with the rangefinder on it, £800. So a massive difference in price as well. So the pod gets it. Pod gets that one on price. So that's size, weight and price down to the pod already. Okay, next major important one, features. Now the ATN will win this on features because it has got a whole host of stuff. Both of these scopes are day and night sight scopes um, with IR. Um, both will take video and pictures, both have different reticle settings and profile settings, but and both will allow you to wirelessly stream your recordings and your images to tablets, etc. But the ATN has more in there. It has geo location in here, um, it has recoil shot in here, it also has in here gyroscopes to give you elevation, which all tags into the ballistic calculator in here. And this is the big selling point about the ATN, uh, is that basically you can put in your pellet weights, your sizes, your speed, and then you tell it what range you're running at, and the crosshairs will automatically tell you where to aim. And it's a very, very nice feature and works very, very well. 
Um, there's some other little features in here that you may find useful, but basically, with feature wise, yes, the ATN does win out over the pod for the feature wise. So I'm going to give that basically to the ATM based on features. Whether you use all those features or not is a different matter. And you'll probably see later where sometimes with all these features is a little bit of a detriment, but we'll come on to that. Right, viewfinder. I find with the ATN that when you're looking through the optical side here, um, it basically what you're looking at is a very tunnel vision, like looking through a cardboard tube, and then you see the square rectangle LCD through here. With the pod, with its 800 by 600 LCD screen, and it's so much closer, your eye relief, I find this fills your eye much better and is more like looking through a normal scope. You don't get that tunnel vision with the rectangle TV at the end, as you do with the ATN. Um, so I'm going to give the um, the eyepiece, the viewfinder, I'm going to give that one to the pod because I find it's a lot easier. But your mileage may vary. That's a subjective one, but that's my personal opinion. And others have told me that as well. Um, let's move on to the battery. The battery with the ATN, with the 4K, is that they now put the battery as an internal lithium battery in here, charged up by a USC port. Lasts about 18 hours, so they tell me. I've never gone that far, but it does last a long, long time. So it's very good. Um, however, it's an internal battery in here. Uh, if that battery runs out or you forget to charge it, you're screwed. Also, if you do use rangefinding, use and uh, you use a torch with it, you're going to need additional batteries for your torch. So not a massive problem, 18 hours worth. However, with the pod, with the pod, it's all powered by one 18650 battery up here. Um, if it runs out, it lasts for about eight hours, depending on how much you use the IR torch. But if it runs out, you take it out, you pop another one in. We've all got loads of these 18650 batteries that are about that big. Pop two in your pocket, you're never going to run out. So even though this has got an 18 hour battery in it, I'm gonna give this one to the pod because I can swap the battery out. As long as I've got spare batteries, I can keep going as long as I want. So pod wins on that one. Image quality is the next big one. Now this is very subjective and it's very difficult to, to actually split these two out. Um, now with the PARD, the PARD basically has a six times optical zoom up to a 13 times digital, two settings, six or 13, that's all you get with this. But the image quality that this puts out is 1080p, um, crystal clear quality, even when zoomed in two times, it's actually very, very good, very, very happy with this, absolutely brilliant. The image quality on the 4K Pro is okay at its base time zoom, in this case the 520 at 5, it's great. It does allow you to zoom all the way up in increments up to 520, so you can have any setting. But this one seems to have much worse image cropping and blockiness to it. Um, this one certainly seems to give you the better quality of image um, at its zoom levels that it's got. Um, I find this one a lot clearer in the part. This one is a hell of a lot more flexible on here and it really does come down to the lighting conditions and what you've got set up. And so it's really difficult. Some people say the image quality on the ATN is better. Some say the pod's better. Personally, I think the pod is better image quality. I'm talking about the video recording that it gives you. The one thing that lets this bad boy down is it's not 4K, and this is the marketing strategy by ATN, and I do hate them for this. So do not expect to get 4K video footage. It's 1080p at its best, at its base standard optical zoom. As you zoom up more, it gets worse. But image quality, I'm gonna call this one a draw. Um, it's very difficult. I suggest you do have a look around and see what other people think, but they're pretty much on a par with that. Audio quality, ATN wins this one down. This is a very simple one. ATN's microphone on here is pretty good. The pod one, its microphone is hidden behind this cover, which you use to charge and put your SD card in. If you want the microphone work, you've got to take the cover off, which exposes it to the elements, sort of pointless. So the ATN wins on audio quality. Build quality. Well, they both seem to be built like bricks. Um, yes, the pod is very solid. Um, it's all in one unit. It's, it's um, IR torch and it's rangefinder. If you have the rangefinder, it's all built, built like a tank. The ATN just doesn't feel as solid. 
and the fact that if you want the range finding capabilities you've got to put on an extra range finder on the end here with the ABL bracket which is constantly breaking and snapping according to many many reports out there the fact also that these tabs here these dust covers just will not stay in place after usage a couple of times the fact that I've lost an SD card inside the unit because it fell through a gap believe it or not and I have to take the whole thing apart this eyepiece keeps pull, falling off at times Build quality, um, I'm going to give build quality to the pod. It just feels so much more robust. Ease of use. They're both fairly easy to use. Uh, the ATN's menu systems up here can get a bit, bit weird to use and then the side button lever here. But there's so many menu systems in here that you want to do simple options. You've got to go in a menu, out a menu, change your profile, back out the menu, etc. Um, and it's it's difficult one to say whereas the pad doesn't have so many features so many menu systems as the atn but it just seems to be easier to use of an ease of use they all struggle with the same problem especially at night was if you've got to have sort of finger memory as to where the buttons are i suppose the atn slightly better than that but then this is plagued with so many different features inside it it gets a bit you know clumbersome whereas this so i'm going to call that one a draw the easy use they're both fairly easy to use the, mount, um, the mounting systems, well, the ATN gets this on mounts because of, unlike the old HD version that was a proprietary mount, now this is a standard tube size and you can put any mounts on this you want, whether you want adjustable mounts, your favourite mounts, whatever it is that you want to use, you can use. And they also supply the mounts in the box of Piccadilly and Dovetail, excellent. The pod, basically you get the standard proprietary mount here, um, it's Picatinny only. If you want to put this onto Dovetail, you get, you've got to get separate adapters if they're not in the box. Um, and I've always found with this that I've had to shim this from three out of four rifles. So the mounting system, yes, this one gets it. The ATN gets it on the mounting system. Um, then we come on to reliability and speed. Now, this is important. Um, unless you're at a range, you've got plenty of times. When you want to switch the unit on, you want it to come on, you want it to stay on, and you don't want it to crash, because at the end of the day, these are computers. This bad boy will constantly crash. Everybody has problems with them. You'd be shooting away, and then suddenly the image freezes. You've got to switch the thing off, switch it back on. Sometimes it won't switch off, sometimes it won't switch on. Unfortunately, with this one, because if there's no external battery you can take in and out, you can't even power it down. I've had this actually freeze on me, and take me over 15 minutes to get working again by constantly holding the power button. Uh, the systems crash quite a lot with this, and sometimes when you switch them on, they don't come on properly. You've got to switch them off and switch them on again. And it does take quite a bit of time to fire up these ones. Pad, zero problems. And it's probably because it hasn't got all of that extra software that you don't need. It just seems to fire up. Fires up within two to three seconds. Never once crashed on me on many, many hours of usage. So I'm extremely happy with this. So reliability and speed, definitely down to the pad. The pad wins that one. Um, and then we move on to customer support. At the end of the day, you're buying quite an expensive, you know, up to 800,000 odd pounds worth of equipment. There's no easy way of putting this. ATN's customer support is atrocious. Absolutely. If you've got a problem with this, send it back and hope to God that it gets sent back to you again. I know people have gone through four or five of these. Uh, the customer support don't seem to care. The RFDs are doing a brilliant job trying to sort it out for them, but ATN themselves don't care. The forums are not populated. Nobody seems to be interested. They seem more interested in selling you additional add-ons to make up for the shortcomings of the ATM 4K than they do of looking after their customers. The pod, I've had zero problems with it. And the only times I've had to discuss this, I've had immediate responses. Absolutely fantastic. And other pod users tell me likewise as well. So two things here. Number one is its reliability and speed. It hardly ever goes wrong. And when it does go wrong, this customer support is great. The ATN, loads of problems with it. It constantly crashes, breaks. The updates they give you uh, sometimes work, sometimes don't. And then the customer support in their forums is rubbish. So the PAD wins that, definitely on customer service. Let me come on to add-ons. Well, this is a weird one. So with the PAD, there is no need for add-ons. You want a rangefinder? Well, you get the rangefinder version, it's here. You want your torch? It's there, excellent. The buttons are there, you can do with it what you want. What else do you need? Whereas the ATN, yes, it has add-ons. Why does it have add-ons? Because it's got things that don't quite work with it. So for example, 
Uh, if you want a rangefinder, you've got to get the rangefinder add-on, the ABL, onto that. You can also get external battery packs for the old HD versions of them because the batteries are crap in them. Um, you can also get from track wheels to the side to help you with the buttons because the buttons are rubbish. So yes, I'm going to have to give it to the ATN because it has lots of add-ons that you can get. But the add-ons at the end of the day are to make up for features that are not easily properly implemented, whereas the pod doesn't need them. But we'll give that one to the ATN. Why not? So there's quite a lot there that I've gone through um, as to pluses and minuses. And we've been keeping a tally of these going. So uh, yeah, I think you, you, you're probably going to work out which side of the fence I'm going to go on here. I went with the ATN HDs and then onto the 4Ks because of at the time it was that or the Yukon. The pods were around, but they weren't that great. Um, and it is a good unit. Um, but at the end of the day, I said this right at the first time, is these seem to be 10 years behind date. The speed, the responsiveness, the, the digital optical stuff in here, it seems to be, it's not as great. I mean, in fact, in one of my original videos with the ATN, I said that my five-year-old camera had better technology than the actual scope. Whereas the pod really seemed to have done what it's supposed to have done. That is put it into a small, compact unit. Why should your scope be any bigger in terms of size um, than your mobile phone? It's doing the same thing pretty much with a couple of lens elements and part of cracked it. It's all there, it's got the range finder, it's got the IR, the removable battery, it's got the functions and the features that you actually need without all the extra stuff. So Jews then down to its size, its weight and its price. You know, those are the three big ones for me. So personally, I am personally moving away from ATN. Um, it's been good-ish. It's been very troublesome. But I'm going down the pod route, basically. So for all you guys that are asking me which one do you prefer, which one would you recommend, the pod MV08 or the ATN 4K, i sorry to say, but I would definitely have to go with the pod MV08 series. So hopefully you found this video find, um, interesting and useful. I'm sure I've probably upset quite a few ATN 4K Pro users out there. Um, I know I have, I always will. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, which do you prefer? Is there anything I've missed out of these? I'd love to know your comments, please keep them civil. And if you haven't already, don't forget our merchandising. Don't forget our groups as well, Facebook groups. And don't forget to check out our other videos and I'll see you on the next video.